it all welcome back to Beanie's Hobbies and in this video we're going to be taking a look at this Crowley Ender 3 V2 I mean oh sorry I mean Voxlab Aquila which is blatantly obviously a Crowley Ender 3 V2 clone um, <clears throat> but I will say it is a very very good clone um, this isn't standard by any means I have done a little bit of tinkering with it um, but standard out of the box fantastic printer uh, I mean it's considerably cheaper than the Crowley Ender 3 V2 um, works just as well as the Crowley Ender 3 V2 so you're saving yourself some money straight away um, it is it is what it is it is a clone of a Ender 3 V2 so, like I say, I have made a few slight modifications. You'll see one straight away, which is this. It's been modified with a Micro Swiss Direct Drive Kit. Now, if, you're seven, if this is something that you want to do yourselves, you will need to make a couple of slight modifications to your machine. For one, the actual hot end surround that is on the original printer and I say on the original printer if I can see if I can find it um, which is uh, this one right here will not fit on the micro swiss but luckily for me I did have a spare hot end assembly or oh, just the case fan, sorry, from an Ender 3, so I just installed that. I am using the original hot end from this machine. So I just bought the bare bones kit with no hot end or anything. So literally it was just the back plate and the rollers. So I installed it on, adjusted my E-steps, and it's been working really incredibly well. The only one other thing you will need to do, if this is something you're thinking about doing, is you're going to have to modify slightly your end stop switch because it's normally set back inside this bracket. So when this comes across, it won't actually trigger it. So all I have done is attached it to a separate little piece of bracket that I had and I've just moved it out slightly. So now it will actually trigger it when it comes across. So few test prints I haven't done too much with this printer um, these are the ones that are on the card so it does actually come with this spool holder adapter so you can then fit it to the side of your printer if you wanted to move the spool holder the spool holder down below but I mean at the minute because I am now direct drive my spool holder my spool is right at the top in the middle of the printer next up uh, we have a door opener see obviously with everything that's been going on at the moment you can just use this to hook your door handles rather than having to touch any door handles uh, then we also printed a knob for the extruder like I say all these files were on the SD card and then last up is this obviously a bit of a test for the printer now these were all printed pre-direct drive so these were all done before the direct drive was actually installed so as the printer sits out of the box prints actually incredibly well i said only one other thing that i've printed which was also on the sd card you'll see down here is it's just this little toolbox that just literally slides into the rails on the side of the printer just a little toolbox and that was also on the SD card apart from that I haven't really done too much printing with this machine I'm still in the sort of tinkering stage but I thought it was worth a mention you know worth an upload because like I say I picked this thing up on Amazon funnily enough Amazon UK um, I managed to get £25 off discount and then because I used honey I also had another £10 voucher with honey gold so I picked this up that was about 150 150 pounds so near enough about 100 pounds cheaper than what an ender 3 v2 would cost you 
uses all the same parts as the Ender 3. As you can see down here, I have gone from micro USB to full size SD card converter. You know, when you get your big old fat sausage fingers like these, I do find it hard to get the micro SD cards in and out. Everything is exactly the same as the V2. Obviously, these are grey, where on the V2 they are blue. So you've got your belt tension pulley there adjustment. Another one up here as well, exactly the same. Um, obviously, the only thing that this doesn't have is your draw, draw for your tools. So there's any difference. Everything else is completely the same. Um, print quality wise, I would say it is on par with the V2. Several mixed reviews out and about that I've seen. Um, I don't understand what people are on about. This is a very, very good printer. You don't need to do this, but I had a spare one. I thought, you know, I'll give it a go to see if I can get it to work. Works absolutely flawlessly. So I just love direct drive. No messing about, and then it gives you the ability to print with all sorts of different filaments that you want to, that obviously normal extruders wouldn't do, especially with flexible filament, because they just will not feed without all bending up from, from the side of these printers. Um, so I will turn it on, because I will say that these printers have got such a nice display on them. Excuse the noise, I recycled an old fan that I had, so uh, yes, it's noisy, but that was just me being me because I was just being lazy. I'll stop in a minute. So yeah, your printer wouldn't be like that, it's just because, um, reduce, reuse, recycle, why buy new when I've got an old one sitting there? Yes, it's a bit noisy, but if I go into control, and then if I go to preheat, I get even more noisy, but that'll, that'll stop in a minute. All right, let's just take you off this stand. Just ignore that, guys. It will stop, I promise. <laughs> but now, if we look at this, this, it's not obviously it's not touch screen. Okay, so like I say, it's not touch screen. You now you can hear the fan is actually shut up. Um, but we do have obviously the knob on the side here, and we can control everything that you need to control from this board from this display sorry this printer does not have filament detection but obviously if you plugged a sensor in and then turned it on it would then have filament detection this was in the latest update so if you go to obviously their website there is an update for the board and also an update for the screen so that was easy enough to update just the same as what you would do on the quality machines so we've got a nice clear crisp screen which you can see from all angles which is a nice bonus now build plate wise is there enough exactly the same as the v2 we have uh, 220, 220 by 250, so nice decent sized build area. Um, I haven't really got, <laughs> I mean you've probably all seen videos on the Crowley Ender 3 V2, like I said a million times this is a clone of it and this is a cheaper alternative to the V2. I mean, you've got your glass build plate, it's exactly the same as the V2, just obviously rebranded with their logo on it. Uh, heated bed, non-insulated heated bed. Um, not had any issues with that though at all whatsoever. So I'll take you for a quick little look around. Obviously the power switch, back corner. I mean, this file was actually designed for an Ender. So I had this originally on my Ender 3 V2. Took it off and just bottled it straight onto this machine. Fits like for like. Do have large levelling nuts. I 
I mean, if you're looking for a cheap alternative to Creality, straight out of the box, this printer works absolutely fine. But I like to tinker with my printers. So this one's a little bit of a work in progress. Um, I haven't come across any issues by converting it to direct drive. Um, I haven't, in all fairness, noticed any difference in print quality by converting it to direct drive. Only thing it means is that I can then print with other materials other than PLA that a normal setup would struggle with. So it's something you don't need to do because this thing will print absolutely fine without it. But this is a very, very good printer indeed. I, I do like it, I must admit. And for the price point, you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. So guys, yeah, it is definitely, definitely worth a look. Um, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to Creality and you want to try something else, it's well worth a look. Out of the box, like I say, I keep saying it works perfectly. And apart from my obviously noisy fan, it is very quiet. So obviously there's no auto bed levelling available for this machine, uh, but levelling the bed is simple enough, just sheet under your four corners, I've had no problems with that at all. You do have the option to adjust your Z offset while printing, so you can baby step your Z, which I do like that feature, just you know, if you haven't got something just quite right, rather than to stop the print, re-level your bed, you can just adjust it on the fly to get that perfect first layer. So, yeah guys, it is one that's well worth looking at. Anyway, that's it for me for waffling on for now. I've now got another printer to go and assemble, so keep an eye out for that one coming up in a later video. So, from Beanie's Hobbies, the Vox Lab, Aquila, another thumbs up. One of these days I'm going to find a pup of a printer to do a bad review on, but so far I've actually been quite lucky with my printers. Anyway, I'm off now, so I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheerio!